Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today I'm bringing you a special video. It is the 10 most annoying cards in the Pokemon trading card game. Now, there's actually not 10, there's like many, 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 many annoying cards in the game. So, some ground rules. We are going in the expanded format. This is from the black and white expansion through to when I'm recording this, which is the Evolutions expansion. I also, shall we say, retain the right to lump cards in together where they're similar enough just so I can get enough cards on the list. Now, a few that aren't going on the list. Night March. Let's get it right out of the way quickly. I am going for annoying cards that stop you playing and really ruin your game. Night March is annoying because it's good and it beats you a lot, but it's not annoying because you can still do what you would do against Night March. It doesn't make the list. Lysander's a very annoying card, but really it's kind of a staple. It's annoying because it makes you lose. Everyone's playing it. It doesn't really count. Lysander's trump card is incredibly annoying. But it got banned for being too annoying. Focus Sash is a very annoying card because it stops your opponent getting one-hit KOs on your fighting Pokemon. But with so many ways of getting rid of it, like Tool Scrapper and Startling Megaphone, it doesn't make the cut. It's too easy to get rid of. Similarly, we've got the Chandelure with the super annoying ability... Fainting spell, when you KO Chandler, flip a coin, if heads, you get KO'd as well. That's ridiculous, but it never saw any play. It's not making the list. Also, cards like Durant, which can just make you discard all of your deck in a few turns. It's super, super annoying, but Durant is so easily countered nowadays by cards like Darkrai and Volcanion that it's just not playable, so it doesn't get on the list for being annoying. Pyroar fails for the same way. When the format was full of Plasma Pokemon and Pyroar sat there with his invulnerability to basic Pokemon like the Plasma Pokemon, it was super annoying. But now that we've got stuff like Hex Maniac and Garbodor, it's just not as good. So, first we'll go with a couple of near misses. Headringer, the Pokemon tool card that you put on EX Pokemon and it means that their attacks cost one more energy. It's super annoying and it really did mean that your opponent wasn't able to do things. Like, for instance, use a Sky Return on a Shaman for a double colorless. It would stop your opponent attacking. Came close, didn't make the list. Red card, Puts your opponent down to four cards in their hand. It's an item, so you can play it whenever you want. It's not like Judge, which is a supporter, which can only be played once per turn. Red card is super annoying, but not quite annoying enough. And finally, Wailord. It's got 250 HP. It's a basic Pokemon, and it can heal with cards like Pokemon Center Lady, Max Potion, and Rough Seas. Very annoying, doesn't quite make the list. So in at number 10, we have got Giratina EX. Now he actually has a double dose of annoying. He's got an ability which means he cannot be touched by Mega Pokemon. That seems pretty annoying. And even if you use something like a Hex Maniac to turn off that ability, you've still got to be able to do 170 HP or 210 if they've got a Fighting Fury Bout in order to KO them. Not only that, but Chaos Wheel stops your opponent playing Pokemon Tools or Special Energy or Stadium cards the following turn. Something like a Rayquaza meets a Giratina and they can't play Skyfield, they can't play Double Colorless, they can't play Spirit Link and they can't attack Giratina. Yeah, Giratina's pretty darn annoying. In at number 9, we have the trio of Regice, Jolteon EX, and Glaceon EX. The trio so annoying that they got together with the supporter card Ninja Boy and formed their own deck. Regice stops attacks from EX Pokemon, Jolteon stops attacks from basic Pokemon, and Glaceon stops attacks from evolved Pokemon. You just Ninja Boy into whichever Pokemon you need and you sit there laughing while your opponent is unable to attack you. Now Pokemon Ranger can counter them which puts them quite low down on the list but they're still pretty annoying. 
In at number eight, we've got Excelgor. And Excelgor makes the list because Excelgor has one of the most annoying things possible automatic paralysis. None of that flipper coin garbage. You use deck and cover for a double colorless energy, they're paralyzed and they're poisoned, and you shuffle Exalgor and all cards attached to it back into your deck. At which point you put a new Exalgor in the active, and the next turn you attach a double colourless energy, repeat until your opponent is crying on the floor. And he's got free retreat just to add insult to injury. Not unlike the last Pokemon, sometimes he even adds in Vile Bloom for an extra dose of annoyingness. Now quite similar to Exalgor, we have Vanillux. He's not making the list on his own, but he's deserves a mention in here with Excelgore. Now he had double freeze which was not quite automatic paralysis but you had to flip two coins and only one of them had to be heads to get paralysis. You would combine this with the victory star Victini which means that you got to reflip if you did flip a double tails and you had something like a 15 in 16 chance of getting the paralysis. Spoiler alert, I haven't done the maths, I could be wrong. Coming in at number 7, we have Sableye. Now, Sableye on his own isn't particularly annoying. He's got the attack Junk Hunt, which allows you to grab some item cards out of the discard. Well, that doesn't sound too bad, but here's the thing, and a whole bunch of these cards are going to be coming up later. He can use Hypnotoxic Laser and Crushing Hammer and Enhanced Hammer, and he can just keep going and going and getting rid of all of your stuff. He can literally stop you playing for the entire game. He can even use Double Puzzle of Time here to recover cards from his discard when he isn't junk hunting. Possibly the most annoying card, and he really gets lumped in at number 7 with Sableye, is Life Dew. That's right, not only can Sableye get rid of all your energy and poison you and so on, but he can even have Life Dew, the tall card which means when you KO Sableye, you don't get a prize. Not only does Sableye stop you play in the game but you don't even get a prize for knocking him out that's why he gets in at number seven at number six a card with which you should all be familiar by now it's Garbodor. He turns off abilities playing Volcanion want Volcanion EX's ability gutted playing Greninja want Greninja breaks ability gutted. Playing Mega Gardevoir, want to use Shaman and Hooper and Dragonite to keep recycling the Pokemon in your discard? Gutted. Quite frankly, this just completely wrecks decks. Garbodor sits there against many decks in the format and goes, oh, you, you want to do that? Well, you can't. Making him very deserving of number six. In at number 5, what I would call the flippy cards. Super Scoop Up, Crushing Hammer, Pokemon Catcher. And the reason these are so annoying is because they have an amazing effect if your opponent can flip a heads. And that's what makes them extra annoying. Because you know that if your opponent had flipped a tails, they would have done nothing. So not only does your opponent get a brilliant effect but they've got to be lucky to do it. Super Scoop Up is kind of like Scoop Up Cyclone or AZ, except AZ is a supporter, and Scoop Up Cyclone is an A-spec, so it's one per deck. Crushing Hammer is kind of like Team Flare Grunt, except it's an item, not a one per turn supporter. Pokemon Catcher is kind of like Lysander, except it's an item, not a once per turn supporter. All of these are better versions of cards which are mitigated in some way, as long as you can flip a heads. And that makes them so gosh darned annoying that they get in at number five. At number four, what I'm terming the item lock cards, or more accurately, the turn one item lock cards. It's Trevenant and Vile Plume. Vile Plume can evolve straight up on turn one using Forest of Giant Plants, and Trevenant can evolve straight up from Phantump on turn one using Wally, meaning that you can go first, 
Get the item lock and your opponent might have to go for the entire game never having access to their item card. Now you can use Hex Maniac to turn them off, but then you've used your supporter for the turn. And with something like Trevenant, you could use a Lysander to maybe pull up a bench Pokemon if there's a non-Trevenant on their bench. But you know what? you might not get the opportunity to do that. And just in case that wasn't annoying enough, Phantom's got Ascension, which can be used for zero energy with a Dimension Valley, meaning if you go second, you are almost guaranteed to get the item lock. That, ladies and gentlemen, I've said this word a few times, I'm going to say it again, annoying. In at number three, the supporters that don't even give you a chance. Free supporters where you might lose the game just because your opponent happened to play a particular supporter. Delinquent, N, and Getsis. Delinquent allows you to not only discard a stadium card in play, but force your opponent to discard free cards from their hand. If they have free cards or fewer in their hand, that means they discard their entire hand which means you can be rocking along winning the game nicely your opponent plays a delinquent and if you don't top deck the right thing you sit there while your opponent wins the game similarly n you get to make yourself and your opponent shuffle your hands back into your deck you both draw a number of cards equal to the number of prizes remaining you've drawn five cards your opponent plays an n you get a one card hand and if you don't top deck the things you need to win the game then you lose and even though you took a big lead and were having a good game, will your opponent just happen to play an N at the right time? But the most heinous of them all, ladies and gentlemen, is Getsis. You can go first, play this on your first turn of the game, or whatever else you like. Your opponent reveals his or her hand and shuffles all item cards into his or her deck. And as if that wasn't annoying enough, your opponent then gets to draw a number of cards equal to the number you shuffled in. Which means unless you've got a supporter or a shaman in your hand, you're in top deck mode. And that means if you don't draw exactly what you need, you might never get set up and your opponent might win the game in a couple of terms. Ultra Ball, Trainer's Mail, Computer Search... Battle Compressor, Versus Seeker, all these cards you might need that Getsis will not allow you to have access to. Annoying, methinks. Although, I should add as a quick appendix here, these cards, these supporter cards, do take a bit of skill in terms of knowing when to use them and when not to. In at number two, my personal favourite, but I'm trying to do an objective list here, Hypnotoxic Laser. An item card that automatically poisons your opponent's Pokemon. And you get to flip a coin. And if heads, they're asleep as well. I have lost so many games because my opponent played a Hypnotoxic Laser. They flipped a heads. And I flipped 8, 9 or 10 tails in a row. Never woke up from sleep. And lost the game. It can give your opponent time to set up. Or it can just give your opponent time to get two attacks. Without you being able to counter attack. And then oh yeah you lose the game. And sometimes the sleep is completely irrelevant. Because the poison KOs you anyway. What's that? 10 damage from poison not quite enough. Well it's okay. Because we also have Verbank City Gym. Which means instead of doing 10 damage between turns. Poison now does 30. But we all know what's coming in at number one, ladies and gentlemen. It is Seismitoad. He ruled the standard format until he was rotated, and he's been making noise in the expanded format ever since. Although he has quietened down a little bit lately, but that doesn't make him any less annoying. He's an EX Pokemon. He's got 180 HP. He can use Fighting Fury Belt, so he's got 220 HP. He attacks... For just a double colourless energy, does 30 damage and stops your opponent playing item cards while you can play as many item cards as you like. And you'll be playing item cards like Hypnotoxic Laser, Crushing Hammer and Super Scoop Up. It is the most annoying card we've had in a very long time. And anyone that was playing when Seismitobe was at the height of his powers, I'm talking when Lysander's trump card was legal, will know quite how ridiculous that was. Now, you know the deal, ladies and gentlemen, this is 
going to be a divisive video, so get yourself in the comment section. Try and be a little bit nice. If you're telling me what should have been in this list, tell me what should have been taken out. Give me your own top 10 list. There's only room for so many cards, and as you saw, had to take a few shortcuts to get it down to 10. I hope I am forgiven. There is a button to both like this video and want to subscribe to this channel. Can I please suggest that you use them both? It would make me very happy indeed. And you can find me on Twitter at the Wassy. The most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.